Good day and thanks for tuning in, everybody. My name is Mike Cluett, Regional Counselor in the town of Milton for Ward 3. I'm here with the co-host with the most, and that ain't no boast, and that's Clark Somerville from Wards 1 and 2 up in Halton Hills. And today we have the privilege and honor of having Kate Holmes on. We've had her on before, but this is the first time she's been on as her new role of the Executive Director for the Women's Center of Halton. Kate, good afternoon. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm great, Mike. Good to see you, Clark. It's always a pleasure to join both of you and talk about all of the wonderful community work that is happening. It's, it's always a joy to chat with both of you. And it's so good to see you, Kate. And Kate and I go back about, let's say, a lot of years. <laughs> Don't put a number on it, Clark. No, I'm, I, I realized <laughs> I shouldn't put a number on it. So let's just say a lot of years. And I've known her and her family for a number of years. And it's great to see a fellow Actonian today. That's right. And Mike, don't put a number on the length of time we've known each other as well. So it's it's getting up there too. It, it hasn't been long enough. That's all I know. <laughs> oh, you are smooth. <laughs> there you go. And we are keeping with the North Halton connection because in case people don't know, Kate has a connection to obviously North Halton up in Acton, as well as being a current Milton resident and a supporter here as well. So we're keeping with that in the North Halton connection here on Local Matters. So Kate, it's been great to uh, have you on before as uh, viewers of the show know that you've uh, held a number of roles over the few years uh, in Milton and Halton Hills. Uh, and But this is the first time we've had you on the program as the Executive Director for the Women's Center of Halton. So it's great to catch up with you. And can you give us an update on uh, obviously the Women's Center of Halton and, and, and how things have been going since you've taken over? I have had the opportunity in my career to have some really great community roles, and I really feel like I've absolutely found a new niche for the advancement of women at the Women's Center of Halton. It is such a great cause, and we have come so far as women, but not far enough, and we need to continue to break that bias. So through my role at the Women's Center of Halton, we now no longer have a wait list for counseling programs. So people can call and get that therapy that they need to help them along on their journey. We also have legal calls so people can get that legal guidance that they do require because it's really expensive, really expensive. So we can support through self-esteem programs and resilience programs through our peer-to-peer -peer support line. People just need to reach out and we will help them where, wherever their needs are. We will meet them where they're at. Excellent. You know what? And it's, can you just go over just very briefly, Katie, the, um, some of the programs that you are offering at the, at the, you know, at the shelter and the service? Yes. So we have lots of really great programs happening. We have something called coffee and conversation where it is networking and the women can, can log on and get together and just talk about what's on their mind. And they're from all walks of life, all ages. It's really an inspiring group. We have just finished up a book club and another one will be starting. And we also have a journaling program where people can learn to journal and self-reflect. And they've been extremely successful and people just have to have a little peek at our website. And those programs are, are always running and new stuff happening all the time for us. Wonderful. You obviously had to deal with uh, with COVID as, as we all have over the last couple of years. And in, uh, in I guess in previous years, I guess, comparison to, to how difficult it is for, for I guess, women to, to reach out uh, to the center for, for assistance, uh, if there's been any barriers uh, that you've had to deal with over the last couple of years dealing with COVID? That's a great question, um, Mike. And I think that COVID has certainly affected a lot of not-for-profits throughout the world through, through the last two years. But us specifically, we've seen a, a drastic increase in numbers because now you are at home 24 seven with your abuser. You can't access resources like you used to be able to because you're sharing very close quarters because the women would often say they were at the grocery store and they were able to come and get the services that they needed from us. Also, another interesting barrier is the technology piece. People might not have access to a computer or needed some support in learning how to use Zoom and Microsoft Teams and all of those great platforms out there, but it was so new to so many of our, our people. So that really, that isolation piece was a huge barrier. You know, and it's been one of the sad um, markers of the pandemic has been the number of calls for intimate partner violence and you know how they've 
gone up. And being on the police board, we see the statistics and they're shocking. You know, people, they don't, they, they, they don't think of this happening in like a, an area like Halton. And sadly it does. And I'm hoping one day we can, you know, this will be a conversation that we, we, we forget we ever had to have, you know, because it is such a shame that uh, it does happen. I 100% agree with you, Clark, and we need to continue to break the bias. And speaking of breaking the bias, I know that there's an event that is coming up, so we want to give you substantial time here on the program to talk about it. Uh, it's called Break the Bias, and it is being presented by Halton Women's Place, Savis of Halton, and the Women's Centre of Halton, and that's going to be on March 22nd. Uh, at 12 p.m. I've already registered. Uh, I, I think the lineup is fantastic. I know you're going to go over who uh, who's uh, going to be speaking there. It's it's a great uh, array of speakers. And uh, if you can tell us a little bit about how this event came apart, uh, how the combination, I guess, of the three organizations as well came apart. That's the best part about this event is that the three of us, um, some strong empowerment organizations for women here locally in Halton have come together for the first time to run an event. And I am so excited to be working alongside Halton Women's Place and Savis to present a virtual panel discussion on March 22nd from 12 to 1 20. And how this came together was that we have been talking for a really long time about what space we need to be working together in. And Halton Women's Place reached out and said, what do you think? And the answer immediately was, yes, let's do this. And that's how it all came together. Awesome. That's fun. And how do people find out some more information and to register, Katie? They can visit our website at www the Women's Center of Halton.com. Excellent. And again, this is a, is a perfect time. Uh, as of the taping of the program, this is going to air on Thursday. We're taping on Tuesday, which happens to be International Women's Day. It does. And uh, many of us were at uh, Town Hall today to raise a flag, hence my purple tie and a little bit more formal attire. Uh, I know I was getting razzed off air by, uh, by Clark and, and Chris. Uh, for being a little bit too formal today no, but it never, is international man. women's day never. and i uh, have to take part in that kate uh, before as we're getting ready to finish the segment tell us the importance of international women's day to to not only uh, for, to to lead us to the future uh, to for to look at our past but also to lead forward to the future International Women's Day is all about recognizing the inequalities and how far we have come as women, but how much we still have to accomplish. And that takes great allyship, it takes audacity, it takes empowerment, and we just need to continue to forge forward. And days like today are really important to take a moment to recognize that, but continuing to move forward. I just also want to mention that some of our speakers for Break the Bias panel is Tally Osborne, Lane the Auctionista, Karen Roche, and it will be all facilitated by Jane Allison. So their bios will be on our social media over the next little while on all three of our handles, all three organizations. And so people can certainly have a look at that. And um, it's a great way to spend a lunch with three really important causes. Lane the Auctionista, I've, I've had the opportunity to attend uh, Halton Women's Place's galas over the years, and she has always been uh, the MC for the last, last number of years uh, that I can remember. And she is outstanding, uh, full of energy, just, just in your face uh, type of a comedy and, and just a, and a great spokesperson for, uh, for this uh, movement, I think, uh, just uh, from her own personal experience and such. So I'm looking really forward to to seeing her as well but uh, a lot of the uh, we have uh, one of the uh, ladies I can't I'm trying to scroll really quickly it is the fire chief for the city of Burlington that's Karen so she yeah. has really um, had to break through a male-dominated industry to be in the role that she is in so that's going to bring a really interesting perspective and Tally Osborne was born without limbs and so she talks about her life and her journey and what that was like for her growing up and, and having parents that abandoned her. So I hope everyone keeps an eye out for the social media posts. They can go to the website you had mentioned. And I know our producer extraordinaire is going to put on the bottom of the, or sorry, our award-winning 
producer extraordinaire is going to have that up on the uh, on the screen as well so people will be able to do it and i'm sure halt news will be covering the event as well as leading up to it with a bit of promotion for it as well but i really hope it goes well katie I'm, and i'm going to be i'm going to be trying to sign up i got to check my schedule as soon as you said that i started thinking i got to look at my schedule and see if i'm free that i can join that day and I would love to see men attending this. It isn't just for women because that allyship piece is extremely important to us and it starts with you. So thank you for, for participating and chatting with me today, but do attend the event as, as men as well. We welcome that. And a couple of years ago, as Mike's probably heard this story, but I was with the president of the Bolivian Women's Municipal Association and we were in, um, we were in Colombia and she was talking about you know some of the challenges that they face because their councils have to be 50% women, 50% men when they're elected. But the women get so much pressure and threats to resign that after they resign, a man will come in and take over that position because I've worked with, with um, groups around the country and around the world on increasing women's participation in municipal government. I've been one of the fundraisers for, for it at FCM and it's a program I deeply believe in because you know the more voices you add to a table, and the more diverse the voices are, the better it is. I agree with you, Clark, and thank you for advocating for that. And Mike, as always, thank you for your participation in Hope and Heals and everything that you do to empower women. You, you two are certainly setting an example and we appreciate that. It's so important, again, like as you mentioned, it's to be allies. So if, if you are to be an ally, one of the things that, that we as men have to do is we have to listen and we also have to take action and, and stop that cycle. And it's the same thing with Hope and High Heels with the Halton Women's Place. Uh, taking back the night with Savas of Halton when they do their outdoor walks as well. And to and, and, and with the Women's Center of Halton. And that's again, to provide women with the, the information that they can help break that cycle. And for us uh, as men, we, we are a big part of it. And we have to be leaders in that way. And I, I love how Clark has been working so hard with FCM and, and making sure that across Canada, we're working at getting more women around the, uh, the council tables and, and in government as well, because there are a lot of challenges that we're facing that we do need that common sense approach that a lot of people bring in, 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 in uh, with women. So, Yes, it starts with us. And my advice to all the women out there is keep being fire, baby. Keep being fire. And if we can all get together before we end the end of the segment, we have to break the bias. So we put the the cross symbol up there, Clark, and that's exactly the message that we have on International Women's Day. Let's break the bias. Kate, thank you so much for joining us uh, here on Local Matters. Uh, as you can tell, I call her Kate. I guess that's a Milton name. Katie is the Acton name. I've <laughs> known her so long. <laughs> I, you know, even I, I, I think I called her Kate once, but it's, I just know her as Katie, right? You know, I want to call you Clarky. Is that okay? Well, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Because I knew if you didn't like being called Katie, you would have told me a long time ago. I would have. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Thank you, guys. It was an absolute pleasure. Have yourself a great day. You as well. And we'll be back in a brief message with Mike and Clarky on Local Matters. Hey, Stay Mikey. tuned.